Hi everyone, this is Julie Bean with Be Dahalik, and today I have a video tutorial for you on how to make this earring. So I'm calling this the Lavender Bliss Earring. And what you can see here is we have some Nun Design findings. We've got the earring hook and this pear-shaped wire frame, and we've done some circular brick stitch on the inside, and then we've added these rows for extra interest. And what these are are prestige pearls and lavender, along with Czech glass teacup beads. And I've just put them opposite way of you normally see them, so often you see them working as like a bead cap surrounding the round bead. This time I faced them outward, so it created a really interesting shape. So I really was playing with shapes with this design. So I'm gonna show you how to make this. So I'm gonna put this off to the side right now. You're going to need your wire frame, that's going to be your foundation, and you're going to need your earring hook. You're going to need some seed beads. I'm using Toho 11-0 rounds, and I'm using silver-lined milky white. And I wanted to do that because I wanted these to be a really light spring summery type earring, or even a bridal earring. I think they'd be lovely for bridesmaids or the bride herself. Then you're going to need a four millimeter pearl. I have lavender right here. I also brought off out rose peach because I thought that was really pretty. And you're going to need some teacup beads. So I have these ones right here. And let me show you in my hand, the teacup beads. So you see them right there? And you can see that they are curved on one side and then they're inverted on the other side, which is also why they make great bead caps. You're going to need some beading thread. I'm using Fireline, four pound. And the reason I wanted to do that is, is very, very thin. So I already have it on my needle and you can see it along the edge here. I really wanted it to pretty much disappear. I don't want to see the thread in this design. Sometimes we use the thread as a design element. In this case, I really wanted it to just disappear. So that is why I'm using such a delicate little thread. And then you're going to need for tools, you're going to need a beading needle, I'm using a tulip beading needle size 10, a pair of scissors, and at the very end, you'll need a pair of chain nose pliers. And then you're going to start by placing 45 inches of thread onto your needle. Let's begin our actual beadwork now. So you're going to have the thread on your needle, but you're gonna to go to the very end, your tail, and you're going to tie it directly onto your frame. So I hope you can see this because I picked the blue beading mat, so it hopefully show up a little bit better for you. So you're just going to slip it through your wire frame. And this does not open up. This is completely closed. And we are going to tie a knot. And what you wanna do is you wanna tie a knot with a tail that's gonna be long enough to put your needle back on and weave it into your beadwork at the very end of the process. So at least I'd say a good six, seven, eight inches, something like that. Okay, so we're just doing a simple little knot around the edge of the frame. And we're gonna go back, go through it again. So we've got that tied onto our frame and we have the tail that will be long enough to go ahead and add back um, our needle at the very end. So now we're ready to do the interior row of circular brick stitch. So that we're gonna start here, right up top, and we're gonna work our way around. And at the very end, we're gonna do the interior details. So to start, you're gonna pick up two beads. So I've got two little seed beads on my needle. I'm gonna scoot them down. So I've got them right there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle and my thread, I'm pinching my beads. So I've just got them right here, pinching them together. I'm gonna go through my wire frame and I'm gonna come back around and go up through the second bead. And the first couple beads are the most challenging. Okay, so I've got that on there, like so. So I want to scoot this up towards the top. And don't worry if it's not all the way to the top just yet, you still are going to have time to scoot it. Okay, I'm going to pull that nice and tight. And now I'm going to pick up one bead. So I've got one bead, and now I'm going to slide it down. Come on. There it goes. So now it's there. And again, I'm gonna take my needle and go through my hoop. 
So now I'm gonna come down from the bottom. So it went through my hoop. It's wrapping around my wire frame. And I wanna imagine this is sitting on my wire frame. You can see it like so. And I wanna go back up through that bead. And you can see it kind of moved around on me. I wanna move it back into place. So it's sitting right next to the other bead. So now I've got three beads on there. And now I'm gonna add another one. And I'm gonna, as I go, I'm gonna scoot these up because I really want this first bead to sit in that corner. So when I'm all done, I'm gonna come back to that first bead and go back down through it. So let's do another one. And this is circular brick stitch around the interior of a form. So I put a bead on my needle, scooting it down. Okay, so it's right there. I'm gonna now take my needle and thread and go through my hoop. Okay, and now I'm gonna go back up through that bead again. This time I didn't want to let it get away from me, so I'm actually holding on to it. Okay, so now we've got four beads. So you're just going to keep doing that exact same process all the way around the inside of this pair wire frame pendant. So I'm going to do that here off camera because it would be way too long to put on camera. But when I get back up towards the end here, I'm going to finish it off with you and then show you how to do the interior work as well. As you can see in the sample piece here, we have almost all the beadwork done. So we've gone all the way around the bottom and we're up to the top and there's just a little gap left. So I want to add the last couple beads and show you how to finish off this segment of the design. So I actually have my needle exiting the back, my thread and needle right here and I'm going to go ahead and pick up a bead. So this is a slight variation on how we did it to start with, and it just became kind of nice and easy as I was doing this, so I wanted to show you this as well. So use whatever technique works well for you, but now I just have that needle and thread in the back. I slid a bead on. I'm gonna slide it into place right here, and my thread comes to the front, and I go back up through that bead again. And now, of course, I'm exiting the front, so I'm just gonna take my needle, but instead of putting a bead on it first, I can just take my needle, take it into the back, and now pick up a bead. So just find the way that works for you that's most comfortable. But here we go, I'm just gonna slide it down from the back, and we're almost to the place where our beads are gonna meet. So this is my last bead, and I'm just going to push it into place right there and have it sit properly and go around to the front for my thread, go back up through it, and there we have completed the surround. But what I want to do is I want to connect the two sides. So I'm going to actually now, I'm exiting the top of that bead. You can see right here is where my thread is exiting. I am now going to go through the first bead that I placed to create a little bridge between the two. And now I'm going to just use my fingers to position everything in place. Let's see what we've got. So we have completed the surround. We don't have our added details yet but we have completed that part of it. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take my needle and thread, which is now exiting this bead right here, and I wanna now go through the bead next to it from the bottom to the top. Like so. So this is where we're at. And we're exiting this bead, which was actually the second bead we put on in the whole process. So once you get to that point, I'll show you how to do the final embellishments. But this actually would be a very pretty earring by itself if you don't want to add the extra detail. We are now ready to do our final decorative element, which are these rows on the inside of your wire frame. So I'm going to show you how to do those. So what you have so far is you have your circular brick stitch 
and you are exiting where we left off is you had connected your two ends and you are exiting this bead right here. We are gonna count this bead that I just put my needle through as bead one. And what we wanna do is we are going to work our way down and we're gonna count. So we're gonna do one, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When we get to the tenth bead, we are going to go across with our decorative element. So to get down there, we are simply going to work our needle down along the outer, um, or the interior row of beads, I should say. So now take your needle and go through what we are calling the second bead at this point. Okay, so we just made a little thread bridge. Again, this is why we're using the really delicate thread. Okay, so I'm not going to go around the frame. We've already attached this, it's already secure. There's no need to add extra bulk there. And we're using white thread with white beads. So now what we're gonna do is we're exiting the bottom of that bead. We are just gonna go over to the bead next to it and go through it from the bottom to the top. Okay, so it's creating a little thread bridge between your beads there, but we don't see it. Okay, now we're just gonna scoot on over to the next bead. And since we're exiting the top, we're gonna go down through this bead and just create, again, another little thread bridge. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we get to the 10th bead. We're staying on the same side, so we're not looping around, we're not putting our needle back down through the wire frame. This is actually very easy. And you can think of ways you might wanna vary this design. Maybe you want some rows up here. You know, you might wanna alter it a little bit and however you'd like it. Okay, so I need to count where I'm at so I don't go too far. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is bead number eight, okay? So now this is gonna be bead number nine. Okay, and now this is bead number 10. Okay, and because I believe in always counting twice, I'm gonna count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I wanna look at my sample piece because I want them to match. I'm not counting that bead in the very top corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that is confirmed. But you'll notice something. Our thread is not really ready where it needs to be to add a row on the inside because our thread is pointing this way. So to fix that, now you're going to go ahead and wrap, just flip it the other side. So this is now gonna go around like this and go back through that 10th bead on this side. So you are getting one extra little um, loop around that wire frame. But what that allows you to do is now have this pointed inside, which is what you need to add your decorative element. So now pick up one seed bead, and now you're going to pick up one of these little teacup beads, and there you've got the concave side, and then you've got the rounded dome side. So we wanna pick it up with the seed bead going into the concave side, like so. And now we want one pearl, and there's so many different prestige pearl colors. You can pick your favorite. Or if you are making this for a wedding, you can definitely coordinate the wedding uh, colors so that they match. Okay, so now we've got two teacups on there. We've got that first seed bead, we've got the pearl, and we need one more teacup. I'm not, I'm sorry, we don't need another teacup, we need another seed bead. Okay, so here we go. So that is our decorative element right here. And we just wanna pull it all the way across to the other side on the 10th bead on the other side. So here we're gonna count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's right here. Okay, and I probably should have turned this so I could go right through it once I count it. So I'll have to count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, this is the one I'm going through. And I'm just gonna pull it. 
and there they go. They're just gonna sit in there. And to make it a little stronger, because I don't want this to, to dip, I am gonna go twist this around, go around my wire frame again, I'm gonna go through that 10th bead and all my middle beads. So I'm just working my needle. I'll do it here so you can see. Okay, I need to go through all of them. Go through all of them. There we go. All right, so we've gone through all of them and we're gonna pull. Okay, and then we wanna go through that bead that they exited to. Okay, we have our first little row across. We have finished our first one, you see right here, which has the first segment in the middle, and now we're gonna do two more. So just as we counted down the edge here to 10 to figure out which bead we wanna go into, we wanna now count four more beads and go in and out of them so that we're at the next location for our second row. So we are exiting here. So we're gonna go through, so we're exiting the bottom, I should say. And now we're gonna go through the bead next to it. So we come out the top, so that's one bead. Now we're gonna go down the next one. So that's two. Up the next one, that's three. And down the next one, and that will be four. And again, we have the situation where we are exiting the wrong direction. So we just flip it around. So we wrap around the wire frame again, and we go back through that same bead. So now what we need to do is to add the middle section. And because this is wider, we need to make our segment a little bit bigger. And to do that, we're just gonna start with two seed beads instead of one. So we've got two. Now we're going to pick up a teacup and we're gonna pick up a pearl and another teacup and two more seed beads, one, two. Okay, so this is our middle section, and we're just gonna string it across like we did before. So now we wanna go here, and I'm gonna put it in the right position this time, so when I count, I don't lose track of where I'm at. Okay, so now here was that one that we worked with for this beaded segment. So now one, two, three, four. So we're gonna go through the fourth one. And I do want to also note that these wire frames are a little bit flexible. So if you're finding that yours is a little wide or a little too narrow, you can slightly bend these. So you can squish it together a little bit, you can bend it out. So if you find that there's just a little too much of a gap or not quite big enough of a gap, you can manipulate this wire a little bit. Okay, so now we wanna go wrap this around, go back through because right now this is, this is pretty loose. I don't want it that loose. So like we did with the first one, we're gonna go back through the bead that we just went through, our row bead, our side row bead, and we're gonna go through all these beads again. Okay and the side row bead as well. Okay, and pull. So we have our second row. So now we're gonna do this again. And again, I want you to remember, this is your design. You can fill this whole thing with rows of beads. It is totally up to you. Don't feel like you have to stick to necessarily what I did. Have fun, play, do whatever speaks to you. All right, so for this one, we're gonna go back, actually refer to our sample, because I want them to match. One, two, three. So this time it was three beads. So here's one, make sure I pull that. One. Two. 
two. And it's going in the right direction, so we don't have to do anything tricky. Okay, this is about the same width as this one. So we're just gonna repeat. So we're gonna do two seed beads, a teacup, a pearl, a teacup, and two seed beads. One, two. And we're gonna put it into place. And we're just gonna go across so that it's the third one on this side. One, two, three. Okay, got that in row now. Again, just wrap around. And go back through all of them again to reinforce your work, make them a little bit more stable so they don't droop. And you're gonna go through that row bead again too. And pull. All right, we have our rows, hooray! So this is what we've got. And now the final step is going to be tying off your threads and adding the earring hook. To tie off your threads, what you're going to do is you are going to do a process similar to what you have been doing. So you're gonna pull this tight. This is where we exited. You're gonna go through a couple beads along the edge. Same thing as when we were working our way down to where we wanted to be. So you just wanna get a little further away from your row. And you're doing that because you don't wanna mess with the stability of your row. So once you've done a couple of these, you are going to remember that there is a thread bridge between each of these. So if we look close, there's a little thread bridge right here. And there's a thread bridge right here. So what we need to do is we are just going to catch our needle under the thread bridge. And I know it can be hard to see on this video because it is white. I'm hoping the blue mat helped a little bit. So it made a little loop. And now we're gonna go through that loop and pull. And it made a little knot. So what we want to do now is go back through this bead and pull. So you're trying to pull that knot down either into the bead or so it's laying really close against the bead. And we're going to do that again. So now we're going to work our needle and thread. Here's another thread bridge. Just going to need to catch under it. Makes a little loop. Okay, and go through the little loop. You can see that little loop right there. We went through it, we tied a little knot. So you're just gonna do this several times over until you feel like it's nice and stable. And then you can even just weave your thread in. You can just give it extra reinforcements. You've tied a couple knots just going back and forth and then what I like to do is when I'm feeling like it's done and I'm happy I like to end my thread on the outside I don't really like having a little pokey thread that might show up on the inside because it's gonna blend in and disappear better against the gold and then you just trim it so there you've tied off and you've trimmed your thread on the main part and so you'll just go back and you'll do the same thing for this one. So same exact process, because I know this is a really long video, so I don't want to delay it anymore. So I'm going to go do that one off camera here at the very end to make my finished set, but I do want to show you how to add your earring hook. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to look at your wire frame and you see there is a front and a back. You can see the little wire end right here. So that's going to be the, your back side. And this one with a nice loop is going to be your front. You're going to open the loop at the base of your earring hook. Just twist it out a little. Slide on your beadwork in your frame and close it on up. And now it's secure. So this one, of course, we still need to tie this little tail off. So I want to show you the other one. But you do have a finished set of earrings. But here is your final earring with the earring hook attached. And so here you have it. So again, feel free to experiment, add more rows, add different colors. You don't have to use white if you don't want to use white. The pearls come in a ton of color. So do the teacup beads and the seed beads. So really have fun modifying this design, doing it however you want to. But hopefully this gave you a good foundation and a good jumping off place for your design work. You can find all the supplies and other tutorials at beadaholic.com.